Welcome again to the exciting, ever fascinating world of chemistry. And we're looking today at solutions. Make sure it's in there so I can get all my terms in. All right, solutions are defined as homogeneous mixtures. Now, we've defined each of these terms before, but let's review them again. Homogeneous is substances that are uniform throughout. So they look the same all the way through. Mixtures are sub two or more substances combined physically, so we can get them back easily. Think of Kool-Aid, think of like Tang, anything that you mix together, those are solutions. All right, so in terms of parts, there are two parts. The first is a solid. Solute is a substance that's dissolved. So in salt water, salt would be my solute. The other part is a solvent. Solvent is a substance through the dissolving. Okay, so again, salt water, water would be my solvent. All right, now, we do have different types of solutions. The first one is called is unsaturated. If you have an unsaturated solution, you have less solute than the solvent can hold. In other words, there's more we can put in it, usually pretty weak, pretty unconcentrated. All right, next we have what are called saturated. Now, saturated means having all the solute the solvent can have, that would be concentrated. It would be a strong solution. It's full up, can't take any more. The last thing we have then is supersaturated. Having more solute than the solvent could can hold, using special temperature and pressure techniques, we can generate this process. Now, there are other key terms of solutions. The first is called miscible. Miscible is two liquids that dissolve into each other. So alcohol and water dissolve into each other. We call that miscible. Second is called aqueous. It's a solution where water is the solvent. We also have what is called a tincture. A tincture solvent where alcohol is a solvent. So instead of um, water, al alcohol is the solvent. And the last is an alloy. An alloy is a metal solution. All right, now, there are, we also have to look at solubility. And we'll do a lab on this next week. Solubility is a measure of how much solute the solvent can hold. There are factors that affect solubility. The first factor is temperature. Well, temperature can increase or decrease solubility. It depends on what we're working with. I'll explain that later. The second is stirring. Stirring can cause part, more particle collisions. The more particle collisions, the quicker the solubility takes place. The third is particle size. The smaller particles, the smaller particles dissolve faster. So we want to get them smaller as possible to get them dissolved. And the final one is pressure. Pressure only affects gases as increased pressure increases solubility. We put, think about going down deep in the ocean. We get more gas dissolved in. That's how you can actually end up with the bends. All right, so here's an image I was talking about before, solubility. Solids and liquids on, in general will increase solubility as you increase temperature. But gases have the opposite effect. As you increase temperature, you decrease solubility. The reason for that is because the molecules move faster and are kicked out. Now, one last rule before we finish up, and that's likes dissolve likes. I will show a demonstration of this when we have class on Friday. All right, the rule identifies that polar solutes are dissolved by polar solvents, and likewise, nonpolar solutes are dissolved by nonpolar solvents. Now, we have to understand that water is known as a universal solvent. Does that mean it dissolves everything? No, just dissolves polar solutes since polar is what water is. So since so many things are polar, that's how we get the universal solvent. Okay, and with that, we're done. Take care, be good.